Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to review the book. All right, here we go. Martial Arts Teaching Tales of Power and Paradox, Freeing the Mind, Focusing Chi, and Mastering the Self by Pascal uh, Fallot. I think I'm saying that name right. I have no idea. It's F-A-U-L-I-O-T. French always confuses me. Um, this is a rather slim volume. I picked it up at a thrift store. I, I think I paid like three bucks for it or something like that. And it recounts some of the classic tales told in China and Japan that were used to help educate people and try to, uh, that were studying the martial arts and try to get them out of the frame of mind that they were stuck in, freeing themselves to move on in their progression down the path towards mastery of their skill and potentially of themselves. Um, for me, that's the takeaway message I took from this book, that mastering the skill is one thing, mastering the self is another. And if you only master the skill, you're never going to go as far as if you master yourself. The mastery of the self is the greatest goal of all and is achievable by, uh, achievable by anyone. Um, the concepts of becoming the master of the self means that you don't have to be a martial arts practitioner to uh, to achieve that kind of a form of enlightenment that moment of satori where suddenly you have that epiphany and it all makes sense i've had a few glimpses of that in my life um, i've never achieved a true level of it um, i hope that maybe someday i will um, the, the reality though is, is that the key is to not hope for it at all just to go on the path eventually you will or you will not achieve it but it's about getting rid of the ego about not concerning yourself with the self about becoming in touch with something that is beyond us that we can strive towards the path the way the Tao depends on how you want to look at it yes I am discussing metaphysics I, I realize that may confuse or upsets people, and I apologize, but there isn't any real way to have a conversation about this book without discussing metaphysics, because it is steeped in metaphysics. Um, the stories involved are sometimes, as it says, paradoxes. They're very similar to Zen and Cohen's in some way, in that there isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer. The idea is to break you free of your frame of mind. Now, I've heard a number of tales in this book before, and it was nice to hear a different version of them. I found that refreshing and entertaining. Um, this was originally written in... Uh, whoop, uh, wicked bright. Oh, sorry, guys. There we go. Um, th I, this was originally written in French and translated into English. And I do question the translation a smidge. And I say that because... Well... This is going to be a pedantic weapon commentary, so if anyone doesn't want to listen to that, you might want to stop now. Um, in the book, they refer to a Naganata as a scythe. Um, now, a Naganata is a polearm. Um, the, the equivalent in Europe would have been the glaive. And the glaive has an, here's a, like an, a blade that curves this way, and the sharp edge is here, whereas a scythe curves the same direction, but the sharp edge is here. This is for cutting grain. This was cutting for humans. Um, so, a naginata isn't a scythe. A naginata is a, one of the most elegant pole arms ever created. It's a thing of beauty. My bias is clear, but I also have a great fondness for the European glaive, so I, 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 I happen to like that as well. But the reality is they're both slashing weapons designed to cut on the outside curve, not the inside curve. So it makes me nervous when someone gets something so basic to the repertoire of weapons used by the samurai. Not just the samurai, of course. They were also used by the, the wives of the samurai. Um, in fact, the numerous world uh, practitioners of Naginata are women. And at one time, the world champion was a female, a grandmother. I have no idea if she's still alive or a still practitioner. Um, so that makes me a little dubious about the translation, but the rest of the book seem to have been translated relatively well. The tales that I have heard before, hewed close enough to their original story, there aren't any glaring uh, 
separations that made me think, okay, maybe that was, that was just a fluke. Um, but it was a thin book. It's a fast read. I enjoyed it. Um, it, re it really pulled you into the stories. The author successfully made them feel like tales being told to you. So it drew you in, and you're, you're reading. Boom, 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 boom. And it's kind of amazing how fast I went through this. Um, I would actually find myself getting lost in the tales and having to keep track of time because I read this at work. Um, and uh, it gives me a finite amount of time to read. So if you enjoy martial arts stories, particularly those from China and Japan, that's all this book covers, really. Uh, there are a couple of references to, to, to um, India in here as well. Um, this is a book for you. It's also, I think, an excellent introduction to the sign of the philosophy and some of the martial arts practices in China and Japan. And since it's so brief, I think this would be an excellent reference for someone that wanted to get into this topic not too deeply. For example, someone that wanted to play a role-playing game and you wanted to play a monk or a priest from China or Japan, or you wanted to play a great warrior from one of those cultures, this would help you achieve at least an air of understanding, if not expertise. Um, so I definitely recommend this book um, to, to, to general anyone interested in role-playing games or in to martial arts. So go find yourself a copy. Um, I think it's worth your time. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a trip down memory lane in some cases, but you know, that's always nice as well.